first say a prayer. You can get started now if you want. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I wanted to start off by thanking you for giving me this. Um, I wanted to um, bring up what you know about what we're doing. Um, at our middle school, we're in a program called History Day, and um, it is um, open to all students at our school, and it is a history competition where students create exhibits, documentaries, performances, and they will take it and compete against other schools. And each year, each, um, each school is given a team, and this team um, this year was a triumph and tragedy against, um, in history, and our topic was the Stonewall Riots. And basically what the Stonewall Riots is that it talks about homosexuals fighting over the discrimination and hate that they were given during the time of, well, during the 1960s. Okay. And um, they started a riot when, when their, this bar called the Stonewall Inn was raided by the police and about 13 people were arrested. Um, Thank you. Mm -hmm. We set up a whole bunch of questions we were hoping you could answer so we can get your opinion on um, certain items that are connected to our topic. Sounds great. Um, <clears throat> our first question. Okay, sure. Um, our first question is, are you aware of the Obergefell and Hodges um, court case? That took place on June 26, uh, nine. Uh, 2016. 13. 2013? Okay. Um, it, was that the, the legalization of the same sex marriage? Yes. I think it was only three years ago. It wasn't 13. I think it was three years ago, at least the Supreme Court. Yeah, I think the Supreme Okay, the Supreme Court. I think it was just, it just been three years ago, I think. I but we'll, 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 we'll look into it. Yeah. But it, it hasn't, been, hasn't been six years, it's been about three years. Um, what is your opinion on same-sex marriage? Okay, um, the opinion on same-sex marriage is, uh, <coughs> is wrong. Now, the, the foundation of what I'm going to say is this. Uh, I think you have to get your sources for what you speak. Okay? For example, some people and if you've ever done a course on public speaking, the more authentic your source, the more powerful the argument. I'll give you an example. If I just say that um, John Smith said this, who's John Smith? But if I were to say someone like Aristotle, remember Aristotle was one of the greatest, the greatest Greek philosopher in the world, that's got more authority. Or someone were in an English-speaking country, William Shakespeare. Wow, Shakespeare's powerful. Or if I were to say um, someone like um, um, Robert Frost, one of the best American poets, or Emily Dickinson, probably studied poetry in time. Um, so my, my, my source in what I'm going to be saying because I'm a Catholic priest, is my source is, I believe, the most powerful source, and the source is the Bible. Now, whether or not you accept the Bible or not, if you're an educated person, you have to admit that it's the most famous book in the world. You know, Jews and Russian Orthodox and the Greek Orthodox and the Protestants, 40,000 different Protestant sects that we have, they all accept the Bible. Their Bible isn't the same Bible that we have. But my, um, my, my authentic source is the Bible, the Word of God. And I really believe God's Word is much more powerful than the human Word. Can I give you some biblical passages? Mm -hmm. Can I? Okay. Okay, the first, the, 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 this is the Catholic Bible. There are 73 books. You're learning this in confirmation, okay? Little by little. There's 73 books. There's the Old Testament and the New Testament. First book of the Bible is called Genesis. 
Gen Genesis means beginning. In this we find chapter 1 is the account of creation, chapter 2 is the second account of creation in which we have the creation of, of things, but then creation, the crown of creation is man and woman, Adam and Eve. So God created, God created Adam and Eve. Adam is a man, Eve is a woman. There wasn't two men and two women, Adam and Eve, a man and a woman. Then later on, he's going to say this, but God is going to say this. This is not some psychologist or sociologist or, or some new newscaster at 10 o'clock on Channel 5. This is, this is the word of God. Says to this, he says, you will leave your father and mother father and mother, male and female. Father and mother. doesn't say father and father and mother and mother, no. You will leave your father and your mother. And he says to, to him, you will be united to your wife. So a man united to a woman. Then what God has brought together, let no one rent us, rent Rent, rent asunder, which means to separate. It's powerful. Now you can be quoting uh, sociologists and psychologists and modern people. You can't go beyond the Word of God. So I think when you're, as you're growing older and you're going to be defending certain positions, you have to rely upon the most authentic source. Um, I'm, a, I'm a teacher, I'm a preacher, okay, for many years, no? And what I do when I give, when I give talks, you've heard me give some, some homilies, I try to use the most authentic sources as possible by means of stories, because good teachers are good storytellers. No? Like Jesus, Jesus would, would teach parables, like the prodigal son, the sower, okay? Uh, so um, that's... Uh, that's, that's the argument, the, the biblical argument, is it is very, very clear, very, very clear from the very beginning of the Bible that God created man and woman, and man will leave his mother and father and be united to his wife, and let, let no one rent that asunder, neither person nor political ideologies or anyone. So I'm talking with people, I, I always would say, what is your authentic source of truth? You just say, Juan Garcia walking down Juan Street, who's Juan Garcia? But if you say someone like Shakespeare or Dante or Milton or someone like, like um, Albert Einstein, someone like that, well, that's much more powerful because these are very, very authoritative figures. But the most authoritative figure is God. God is the most authoritative figure. God is God. We wouldn't be here if it weren't for God. The fact that we're talking is because God loves us so much and he's given us the air to breathe. He got every heartbeat that we have comes from God. Every breath we take, we inhale and exhale, comes from a loving God. No, I, I think, okay, do, you, do I think that legalizing same-sex marriage was, was necessary? Um, I think after, do you know what Roe versus Wade is, either of you? Mm -hmm. Your first year confirmation or second? First. first. Okay, because if you're in second, you know it by now. Roe versus Wade was probably the worst decision in this country happened 1973, January 22nd, when the Supreme Court legalized abortion. Okay? Legalized abortion, and since then there, there have been about 62 million surgical abortions, not to mention chemical. 62 million. Uh, so that decision was the worst. 
because you're, you're, destroying, you're destroying human life. And when does human life begin? The moment of conception. The moment that the sperm fertilizes the ovum, and that moment is called a zygote in biology. And that moment, God infuses the soul. So that was the worst decision, but the second worst decision, okay, maybe got the date wrong. On, I, I think it is 2016, we'll look into it. I think that that was the second, maybe the second worst decision in the history of our country. Because the first one is destroying the baby, the other one is destroying the family. And the family is the basic building block of society. John Paul II, you've heard of him, right? John Paul II. The basic building block of society is the family. And John Paul II says, the way the society go, the family goes is the way uh, society goes. Um, given that this is, a, um, this is a, a history lecture, I don't have a PhD in history, but I know a little bit about history. Uh, this I know, if you look at the Greek civilization, the Mesopotamian civilization, the Egyptian civilization, the Roman civilization, which was the longest and strongest in the history of the world, the Roman civilization went on about a thousand years. No? Um, all the societies fell apart when the family fell apart. That's why our, our country is in danger. Sixty percent of marriages end up in divorce today. That's more than more than fifty percent. You know, one out of two, one out of six out of ten. And that, uh, that, that, so legalizing this, it's, uh, it's opening up the door to destroy the family. If you destroy the family, then it's, it's like having a house built on sand. It's just a matter of time that the house is going to cave in. So I thought that the, once, it, uh, once it was legalized, uh, I, I, I suffered a lot. And it was ironic because it was on June 26th, which was a personal anecdote. June 26th, uh, 1954, a couple got married in the church, and they had nine children, 39 grandchildren, and one of them is a priest. And that's me. So it was the anniversary of my parents when they got married. When my dad died a couple of years ago, but I was thinking, my mom and dad, they had a good marriage. And not perfect, but pretty good. Pretty good. So I was thinking, here they have legalizing homosexuality on the day when one of the couples, probably one of the best, probably one, one of the better couples in the country in the past 50 years. So I thought it was somewhat ironic. No? One other thing is this. What is legal is not always moral. But most people don't know the difference. I'm, I'm a theologian, so I have a degree in theology, so I know, I know, how, to, I know how to discern. But not, most people don't know the difference between morality and uh, legality. The best example would be, okay, if you, study, if, you, if you study American history, you have to know something about Abraham Lincoln. You have to. I, I don't know if you've studied about him yet. He was, in my opinion, one of the greatest presidents we've ever had. No? And um, he issued what was called Emancipation Proclamation. In politics, there's a, there's a big a debate in politics, they say, well, that's just a one-topic issue, abortion, that's just a one-topic issue. You know when Abraham Lincoln was elected? One-topic issue, which what? Which was what? Free the slaves, you know, free the selling black people like property, terrible. Or is it like, okay, people could come from Mexico, oh, the Mexicans, you know, yeah, let's, let's sell them like property, that's terrible. You come from Mexico, you don't have less dignity than someone who's born here created by God, we're all equal, right? What does our Constitution say? We're all created with, with inviolable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You learn that. 
when you study history. So a lot of people do not differentiate between morality and legality. So now that it's legal, people that don't have too much religious foundation are going to think, well, same-sex marriages are, are legal, therefore it's moral. Uh -uh. It's legal, but it's immoral. It's immoral. These are all really good questions. Should, should homosexual be treated differently than the rest of us? No. They should always be treated with, with great, um, with great uh, respect and dignity and kindness and compassion and mercy because they're created in the image and likeness of God. And they are um, they're created to go they're created to be happy, and they're created um, to be happy with God forever in heaven. So any type of hate crime or discrimination or yelling at them and calling bad names, that's totally wrong, according to the Bible, the Word of God. Okay, if the uh, if the LGBT community uh, did not form, that law would have never passed. Good question. Uh, I think it would have passed anyway, because of uh, the, there's a certain political tendency in the country over the past thirty years. Uh, that that have that meant ideology. I think that that helped it. But I think you have key uh, persons in um, just that you're aware of this is that the decision was basically made just by about uh, 12 people. You know, it was basically the abortion was made by the the Supreme Court justices, where they pressured by the LGBT or other politicians, probably, probably to a limited degree, but the, the, the Supreme Court tend to be pretty independent. Uh, they're, they're free thinkers, no? They're free thinkers. And um, so that could have had an influence. Yeah, sometimes they, they, they act for expediency so they can be elected, you know? This, Politicians will say what the people want to hear, so they'll be elected. Even though they might say something that might be wrong, but if the populace, the general populace, is going to like it, I might as well just say it. Um, what is the purpose of the Constitution? Like, what is the purpose of the Constitution? What do you mean by that? Well, okay, what could you explain what homophobia is? Homophobia, like when. I think that I think that's really wrong. For example, uh, as priests, homosexual will come to talk with us and lesbians. Yeah. Um, let me tell you this: a very famous program, Christian program, probably one of the most famous in the country, is called Focus on the Family. Have you ever heard of that? It's not Catholic, but it's Christian. Most of the things they say I agree with. Um, and they give really good authoritative sources. They say this, um, teenagers, 13, 14, 15, 16, know that category? Will often go through a certain t stage where they're, se they're seeking out their own identity. They go through what is called an identity crisis. 
And often this is true with respect to one's sexuality. In other words, they have to really determine, uh, they go through confusion. I, I have to determine God created me a woman and that's who I am and that's who I'm going to be. But there's a lot of confusion in that. Um, I would say because of the mass media, I would say also because of uh, what's going on politically. But um, so uh, teenagers, 13, 14, 15, uh, can go through a lot of confusion. Now, over teenagers, you feel that you know everything, but as you get older, you recognize you don't know everything. You recognize your parents know more than you. And maybe the priests know more than you, too. No? You won't admit it now, but as you get older, the older I get, the more I recognize how little I know. And I'm already heading towards, you know, I'm already in my, my mid-60s, you know, recognize how, how little I really know. Uh, the other day I had a, a very interesting meeting with, uh, uh, there was an individual that felt that this individual had same-sex attraction. Um, after talking with this, this individual and his parents, this individual said, no, I want to get married with some of the opposite sex and I want to have a family. So it was just talking it out with me for half an hour, changed change his viewpoint. Talking for half an hour. And he, he was confused and a little bit uncertain, but after we had a really good talk, he ended up by saying, no, 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 I want to. I want to marry and I want to, I want to have a good family. But also this, um, if, if, if I disagree with you on something, I'm not attacking your person. I'm just, attack, I'm, I'm just differentiating between your philosophy and mine. And it doesn't mean that we can't, go be, we can't be good friends. Because I think if we talked on certain things, you would, di you would disagree with me on certain things, and I would disagree with you. We could have a, a, long, we could have a, a long conversation, a controversy, maybe a debate. And we end up being even better friends, even though, even though you're more entrenched in your position than before, and you're not going to change me either. So what I'm saying is homosexual could come in and talk to me, or a lesbian, and express why he or she believes that that's uh, right. And I could give biblical arguments. I could give you other arguments also, but I'm giving you biblical because I'm a priest, and I feel that I should start off with that. Um, and I would give this person the reason why I disagree with him choosing a homosexual lifestyle. Now, he might get up and be in total disagreement, total disagreement with me, but I love him all the more. You see? I love him all the more. You know, when I go to say Mass, I may place him on the altar and pray that one day he's going to get to heaven. But I totally disagree with his, with his viewpoint, totally. And I'm not going to budge an inch. He might not budge an inch either. He'll give me all his arguments for it, I'll give him all the arguments again. We're going on for a couple hours. No? So homophobia, in which you're, you're, you're um, casting out aspersions or, or insulting words, you're never going to get anywhere. Never going to get anywhere with that. Never. You win over people by kindness and love. You'll learn that. You go through confirmation. Love and kindness is what's going to win. You're not attacking the person. I'm sure both of you agree with that. Do you think homosexuals deserve the same rights as people that are straight? Do, do I believe homosexuals deserve the same rights as those who are straight? Um, I would say in, you know, in the political process, in, ec in economics, uh, I would say yes, but um, Homosexuals that decide, 
I don't like to call it marriage because they're really not a marriage, a same-sex union. Because a marriage is between a man and a woman. That's my definition. Man and woman. For me, that marriage is the, it's the sacrament of union between a man and a woman, loving each other in the love of the Lord for the purpose of procreation, which means raising a family. Um, the, the society, now that they have um, they have legal rights to marriage. They're going to be they're going to be get, they're going to be giving the same rights, but um, they're not on the same level as a man and woman married because it's really not a family. Not that I'm discriminating, just it's not a family. Family has to be between a man and a woman. And um, say, for example, to uh, Two women get married. Well, two, two lesbians have a same-sex union. I, I'm not going to call it marriage because I don't believe it in marriage. Now, what happens? One of them decides we want to have a baby. So what do they do? They go to a laboratory in California. They get what is called um, embryonic experimentation, where there's a, a fusion of a, of a sperm and an ovum. And they have a laboratory there, and then they implant it in the uterus of the woman. That's happening today, which is which is wrong too. And then the baby's born. I think that's wrong. Why? Right? Because you have a right to have a mom and a dad. You, as a girl, you're tender, you're loving, you're pretty. You're attentive, you're delicate, you're feminine. You got long hair. You got nice earrings. You got you got your 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 fingers nice. That, that's that's a girl. That's what a girl should be. Man, strong and masculine, strong grip, knows how to hit a baseball, run, play soccer, um, lift weights. Got a beard, talks with a masculine voice. We got, that's a, that way God created him. And so you, as a, you, you, as a, a, you have a right to have the love, the tenderness, the concern, compassion of a mom. That's the way moms are. But also you have a right to have a dad that hugs you and calls you princessa and says, you know, you're, you're, you're the most beautiful teenage girl in the world. Yeah, that, you have to have that. You have to have that. Otherwise, you're lopsided. You're distorted. I mean, the, the, the psyche of a woman and a man is very different. Very different. So you're asking, should there, be, should, should, should there be more time and energy dedicated to traditional families over than to lesbians living together and having a, having a child from a laboratory, I would say yes. I'm, I, I believe I'm discriminating. I'm just defending what really a family is. You hear me? Yeah. Um, do you think transgender men and women deserve the same rights as people that were born in their gender? Um, should transgender men and women have the same rights as those who are born? Male or female, right? Well, I would say that I, my, my response would be the same. Is that is the last question? Like if they economically or politically, they have a, they have a right to live, they have a right to eat, they have a right to um, they have a right to um, to respect and dignity. Do you think everyone is called to be happy? What do you think? Do you think everyone is called to be happy? What do you think? Do you want to be happy? Yeah. You want to be happy? Yeah. Yeah. Are there any unhappy people in the world? Yeah. Why? Um, I would say this. 
is because they're looking for happiness in the wrong place. We're all called to be happy. You want to be happy, so do you. I think both of you are. Because if you really find happiness in the right place, and we believe we find happiness in God. Only God can give us true happiness. And if we go against God, then one of the results of that is, uh, is unhappiness. So actually, just this past year, um, India had passed a law. India? Yeah, India had just passed a law where um, couples that were same sex could live together. What is your In opinion? India? Yeah, what is your opinion on that? Okay, the question is, uh, just this past year, India passed the law the same-sex couples could live together. Well, once again, I'm reiterating what I already said and relying a lot upon the Bible, which is the Word of God. And it's that, uh, remember what I said earlier, is that God created man and woman, and also it's Adam and Eve, and God said, um, increase and multiply, Increase and multiply means have children. And they said, uh, a man will leave his mother and father, be united to his wife, and what God is united, let no man uh, rent a center. Because what we're saying is, uh, whether, whether it's in India or China or Japan or Australia or, or Zacatecas, it really doesn't matter. This is, it's, the Bible is a universal book for everyone. In other words, the, the Word of God is not just, not simply for the Americans or the Mexicans. The Word of God is universal. And the Word of God is truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. By the way, also, what I've quoted from the Old Testament, Jesus is going to quote the same passage in the Gospel. So what I've just said from Genesis, Jesus, who's God, is going to quote that same passage in the Gospel. Then guess who else? St. Paul and the Ephesians. You, got the, you have in the Old Testament, you got Jesus, and you probably heard the letters of St. Paul. It's, it's the Word of God. So you hear it in three, three different parts of the Bible. Um, our President of the United States is considered repealing the law of same-sex marriage. What is your opinion on this? Okay, our president is considering appealing the law on same-sex marriages. What is my opinion? Great. 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 Also, we have a new Supreme Court Justice, Kavanaugh. Maybe they can change Roe versus Wade in which abortion would be, would be illegal. I hope and pray because the, these changes depend upon the Supreme Court justice. And Kavanaugh, you probably followed, you followed maybe the news. It was it was one of the most explosive um, elections of a Supreme Court in the history of the world. Mm -hmm. And he was he was he was accepted anyway. I, I I hope that it is yes. And um, whether that's going to become a reality, I pray that it will be. Because I think this I, I, I were both of you born here or born in Mexico. Well, you're Americans. We should love our country, shouldn't we? Hopefully you love our country. It's called the virtue of patriotism. It's not, the, it's not a perfect country, but it's a great country. And I'm proud of this country. You know? but, there's, uh, but I'm the biggest critic, too. And one of the founding fathers of this country was my great, 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 great uncle. You know? Jacob Broom was one of the founders with George Washington, so I'm, uh, I love this country, you know? and I want to try to make it a better place, and I believe both of you will make it a better place. We both fall in love with God, and a lady Guadalupe, too, right? Um, what do you think this is fair to homosexuals? Um, do you think this is fair to homosexuals? Um, I think it is, you know, because I, let me specify something. Um, you 
No, the the or the origin of homosexuality, um, where it comes from, there's a lot of opinions. Um, I'm not an expert in this, but I, I, I've studied it a little bit. Um, so let me give you the, the opinions uh, in this area. First of all, the LG, LGBT, a lot of them, may God, may, may God bless them, may God bring them to heaven one day. We've got to pray for these people. Huh? Uh, I don't agree with them, and what I'm saying now, they wouldn't, they're not going to agree with me. Uh, but I'm not going to be mean-spirited or, or say anything negative. I'm not going to say anything bad against them. Uh, but th their, their premise is that uh, homosexual is something genetic or chromosomatic. You know what that means? Genetic or chromosomatic means biological, that someone is born, someone is born uh, homosexual. But that's not true at all. I'll give you the best argument. Uh, the best argument I've ever heard is this. Do you know the difference between uh, ident identical and fraternal twins? Okay. My sister has identical twins. They're both, my, the, the, they're both about your age. My, my sister has eight children and two of them are twins. I, I'm the padrino of one of them. No? And, um, but you, you have uh, identical twins. Say for example, you have identical twins, the two, two boys. One gets married and has eight children. The other one is living with his gay partner. That's the best argument you have. Because if it's genetic or biological, chemical, or, or chromosomatic, they both would have to either be straight or homosexual. So their premise is wrong. You're not born gay, you're not born lesbian, but it comes about in other ways. Now most of the studies show this. I'll, ta I'll talk about, I'll talk about uh, guys. If if the, the boy was sexually abused, or a girl too, when they were small, that throws their, whole, their sexuality in total confusion. It's sad to say that it's very common today. Okay? If you're sexually abused, your sexual is thrown up in the air. You're, 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 you're in the moral whirlwind. Okay, another, another cause is this. Um, the um, the father figure. When you have when you have a father that is either absent, he's absent, or uh, he's absent physically, or absent emotionally or he uh, belittles or disparages his son, opening up the door to a possibility of a, of a confusion with respect to his sexuality. Example, father's got two sons. One's 10, another one is eight. 10 year old plays baseball, the other one plays baseball. 10 year old comes home, he went three for three. Home run, double, and triple. His last hit was a home run. They won four to five, five to four because he hit the game-winning home run. His younger brother, playing Little League, struck out four times. The father sees both of them, and he's parading his older son, and he calls his other son, you know, you should have been born a girl. Right, pushing him to becoming homosexuality because he's he's confused at the father figure and the father figure is calling him a girl more than a boy the father is insulting him making fun of him so he grows up he grows up fearful of the father figure 
and prefers to hang around with his little sisters and play dolls. No? So that's another cause. Another is uh, psychologically, some people have a very strong character, others are weaker. If you notice, do you have siblings, any of you? How many? Okay, I'm one of nine, so I come from big. You notice in your family, there's, there's one of your brother's sisters got a really strong character. You know who it is. Maybe it's you. There's another one that's kind of weaker, and the others are in, the, in, in between the two extremes. You know what I'm talking about. So do I, no? So you have c certain individuals that are, that are very, they're very weak, and they're, uh, they're, they're kind of like a jellyfish, in the sense that they're easily influenced by others. Um, so, say for example, uh, and this would be another cause, loneliness. Loneliness is very difficult. Very difficult to be a loner. So you go to school, you don't have any friends. And there's a, there's a group of girls that are lesbian, they form a little group. Hey, come on in. Come on in. You're one of us. And what happens is a little bit, they, they brainwash you to think that you're less because of this crushing loneliness. And because of the, the lies of the mass media. Now the person I'm going to quote today, and then I'm never going to be quoting in homilies, but I, I, I say the person I'm going to quote, they gave you an example. Adolf Hitler. You know what he said? Tell a lie. Tell another lie. Tell another lie. Tell another lie. Tell another lie. What did he do? He, he, he did this so much, he ended up by killing, what, five million Jews. If I were to tell you, look, girls, white, 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 and you say, Father, you're crazy. After I say it 25 times, you're going to be seen white. So people can be brainwashed into believing that what is, what is right is wrong, what is wrong is right by the repetition of the error, repetition of the sin. And having been before a priest, being an English major, I know language somewhat well, very dangerous, very dangerous, ambiguous language in which you can interpret it in two different ways. You know what the half-truth is? It's half a lie. A lot of people can't pick up the lie from the truth when they're being ambiguous. So, uh, and also, in, in, the, in high school today, a lot, a lot of kids, they just want to experiment. Kind of cool, kind of with it, let's try it out. No? But it's, it's, not, it's not genetic or chromosomatic. Those would be about the five of the best um, reasons why. A really good website is Desire of the Everlasting Hills on this topic. You might even look into that and then have your, have your, 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 your friends uh, tap into that. And there's a really good documentary that came out about it was seven or eight years ago. He had three uh, professionals, two were men and one was a, a woman, who chose the gay and lesbian lifestyle. And they're all professionals. And the woman was, was, uh, was in uh, Tucson in a bar, and she met another woman that was like her. And she said she always wanted to get married. She wanted to have children. She wanted to raise a family. But every time she, every time she, 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 she tried to establish a relationship with another guy, she was rejected. So after several rejections, she decided, I want to find some type of friend. And she found a woman in a bar in Tucson, Arizona, that was rejected like her, then she hooked up with her for 40 years. Then her friend died, and she came back to the Catholic Church, made a really good confession, and is now receiving the sacraments. But it was, it was rejection and loneliness. So just be aware, that, that's one of their, their, their primary uh, premises, is that people are born, they're born that way, but that's, that's a wrong premise. Our premise, I mean, a wrong starting point.
you could do anything to change the situation between homosexuals and transgenders, what would I do? I'll tell you. Exactly what we're doing in the parish here would be this. Working with the young people really trying to introduce you more and more to God. And working with your parents. I'm sure your parents know me. I give them, I give tons of classes. And tons of classes, no? Your parents know me. I, I've, been taught, I've been teaching thousands of parents over the past many years, no? And it would be this. Really try to work as working with the, with the teens, but working especially with the parents because mom and dad, they're, mom and dad, they're the first teachers. We can help out. Mom and dad, they're the first teachers. Um, if in your family, uh, your mom and dad, your, your mom and dad, they love God and they love each other and they love they love you you're going to be growing up with a very wholesome emotional, intellectual, moral, and spiritual life. You see, if, you, if I can help to help your parents to instill great love of God in the hearts of your parents, then the, your, your mom and dad, first of all, they're loving God. They have to love God first. Then your mom and dad are loving each other. Then they're loving. Then they're loving. They're loving you. Then you're gonna. You're gonna be growing up as a, as a wholesome, healthy, um, teenage girl. That eventually, I hope you're gonna go to college, get a college degree, become a professional, and hopefully one day you'll marry a man, in the church, and you'll form a really good family. I mean, you know, um, when I was your age. Uh, my dad would go off to work. He worked on Wall Street in New York. Yeah? And, um, you know, you're raising a family of nine. You've got a big family, but our family is bigger than yours. You know what it's like. I mean, you've got a smaller family, but still, you've got a big family. The, the dynamic is different. So you got that family. You know, my parents wanted to, they wanted to send us to college. They wanted that, no? But my, before going off to work, uh, my dad would always kiss my mother. When he came back, he'd always kiss my mother. I sometimes felt uncomfortable with that. Why are they always kissing each other? No? Then I recognized that they, oh, they really love each other. And I just felt with that little gesture, there was a lot of love in the family. And man, that, that guy really loves his wife. That wife really loves that guy. And I think they really love us, too. And if they really have the love of God, the love of each other, they're going to be forming good kids, and they're the future of society. So what I'm saying is, is preventive medicine so that people don't choose that lifestyle. It's by love. First the love of God, the love of husband and wife, and then they love their kids. We hope parents spend more time with, talking with teenagers, and I hope that you, you don't always be on your phone. Don't always be on your phone. I prefer to talk to you more than your phone. You, both of you, you're much more important than a screen. When a pantalla in Spanish, no? It's more important. A human person is worth more than the whole creative universe. Use it. But don't become addicted to it. Don't become a slave of it. So I hope one day that both of you, if you're called to it, you know, I, I always try to promote, you know, hold off on having a boyfriend right now. You finish your college education, get your degree, get your profession, and then, you know, then you can get married and form a really beautiful family. There's a time for everything the Bible says. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot, a time uh, for embraces, a time not to embraces, a time for everything underneath the sun.
And one last thing I'd like to say is this, um, is uh, I think we, we really have to pray for the, those who have, have this catechism calls it a cross, lesbianism or homosexuality. Pray for them. Um, but you know, a, a lesbian and a homosexual who declare themselves that, they say, this is who I am, they still can become great saints. But they have to live a life of chastity. Both of you girls, you have to try to be pure and chaste. You have to be. A very beautiful virtue. So both of you are called to, to live out your sexuality only when you get married with your husband. That's the time and the place. In the meantime, no, no, nothing of that. God doesn't want that. But say, for example, a guy says, I'm gay, or this girl, lesbian, they can become great saints, but they can't live together with another person. They have to live a life of celibacy. We may have to live a life in which they're living by themselves, but dedicated to God. And, the, and there's a really good group that can help out those with the same sex attraction. It's called Courage. It was founded about 40, probably about 45 years ago in, in New York. Our priest, his name was Father Harvey. And Father Bennett Rochelle took it up. And now there's another priest which you can help those who have the same sex attraction not to have sexual relationship with those of the same sex, not to do that, but rather live a life of chastity and really recognize how much God loves them, but they can't be living with, with, with their partner. They can become great saints. They can become great saints. And I really believe they're going to be great saints in heaven that are lesbians and homosexuals who decide, okay, I've got this cross, so I'm not going to live with my partner. I'm going to just love God very much and establish good human relationships that are not going to lead me down the wrong path. Thank you. This is really good. Thank you. Was this helpful? Yeah. yeah. Good. Because um, a lot of our research involves those who were for this. Yes. So we wanted to. Hear so this was about the first time I heard someone had a different position. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, may, maybe allow some of your teenage friends to see. Look, say, there are different positions. This is a Catholic priest that has a different position. You might even say. He bases, he bases almost everything he said in the Bible, the Word of God. And maybe God is calling both of you, maybe God is calling both of you to defend the church of position, the Bible of position. Maybe God is calling both of you to do that. I think he is. This didn't happen by chance, no. Both of you are young and you're dynamic, you're intelligent. Maybe God is calling you to defend the unborn baby and to, def and to defend the family. Yeah, this really helps. So, can we say a closing prayer? Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and bless the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. I'll give you a blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Great? Thank you. Okay, good.